Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and as you can see, we're going to do a vertical painting today. The canvas is a little bit smaller. I think it's a 14 by 18. It's going to be an oil, and it should be a lot of fun. And of course, if you're enjoying these and you want to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now, as you can see, I did a little sketch here, and then I was planning to do a little clear gel on white. Well, my brush was pretty dirty, so that's what we got. Anyway, I mixed up already a little bit of brown, white, and blue. Okay. Right up in this top area, I'd love to get just a little cool note. And we probably have to wipe the canvas off because this is fairly wet up here, of course. Down here is dry. I want to get just a little bit of a cool, misty note up here, which I think would be really nice. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, now let's take maybe just a little black and add to that just a little and then blend it in. What we're looking for is we're kind of creating a background forest look. This is going to be trees up here. The main feature, in case you haven't noticed, <laughs> is going to be the water. I think that water is going to be really pretty. We'll put a lot of time and detail into it to make it right. I think that'll look, I think it'll look good. We'll see. As you know, I don't do a lot of paintings like this, but it's kind of fun to do something different. I know you guys enjoy seeing different things. A little red right here in the foreground. Red in the foreground, and then more cool colors in the background. What that does is helps to create just a little bit of depth in this area that's very small. And we need all the depth that we can get. Now let's transition right over here to the water area. I'm gonna paint it in all blue first. And that's probably good because then we can, you know, place the detail in and around. We're gonna do stuff that's lighter and stuff that's darker, which is kind of cool. <laughs> there, this just gives us a nice base to work with. I'm using my dirty brush that way I kind of get some, you know, some areas that are not perfectly blue, and then some areas that are a little more blue, depending on how much paint's in the brush. When I start to run out of blue, some of that black and other stuff in the back of my brush starts to come through. Very nice. Now, when we go to add extra bits to this, we'll, we'll probably then make it darker in the foreground and lighter in the background. I don't think we'll worry about that too much, maybe just a little now. Let's face it, there's just not that, we don't go back that far. This is a river. A beautiful little river moving pretty quick but it doesn't go back very far and we're just looking at the side of it looks like a good a good river for fishing doesn't it <laughs> looks like fun you know what? I, I need to go fishing it's been a little while <laughs> there we go I've mixed up a nice soft green color very muddy actually kind of the green of my palette all right now anyway let's go ahead and just start now I know that we're gonna be reflecting colors but I'm anticipating the colors that are going up here I want to paint the water at least get the water further along before we do too many trees and different details okay here we go three-quarter brush and I'm just gonna set it down and there's just a, I would call it a moderate amount of paint at this very moment down on the canvas could be worse but you know we still, still may need to wipe it we'll see I'm gonna change my color every couple minutes here <laughs> how about every couple of seconds yeah, that's more like it. And I'm going to just pull down. You can pull down or across, but just I would maybe for the most part finish across. Okay, what this is going to do is start to build in detail. The only way this we're going to pull this painting off and make it look decent is if we build tons of colors. So many colors that the viewer cannot count them in the water. It's the only way you're going to make it look interesting enough to grab people's attention and that's what we want we don't want boring paintings around here we don't really like to do those so in order to make this look natural and very interesting we're gonna have to build in a lot of color there now I'm going from a real photo today that's why it looks this way you know it's not like my traditional landscape that goes back for a million miles and so I'm gonna try to match a lot of these colors from the photo because it's really really pretty got some good color in it now I'm starting with the first of the dark lines that we're going to be adding in here. And as you can see, I started really dark. And as I come up, I start to get a little lighter. And then I, let me actually melt the two of these together. Yes. So the thing about this is we want to create a little movement to this water. We don't want it just straight across. And so I'm going to have it moving down just a little. That's good. And it kind of It'll give the effect more of like it's a rapids and actually maybe almost like the river is bending. So let me drop, I'll drop this down just a little. I don't know. We got to do something just to break up that straightness of it. So I'll figure it out. Don't worry. <laughs> there we go. There. All right. So I just keep working on these over and over again, kind of melting them together up in here. Definitely get smaller. So as we go back, less pressure, less paint, 
lighter paint color. See that blue right there? A lot of blue today. Lighter paint color. And then we can actually wipe the canvas off if we need to. Say back here, maybe, oh, we can hear is a calm spot. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna indicate something that's calm back here. Yeah, and then over here, it starts to get rapidy again. So very, very fast moving right in this area. Actually, we're gonna do some rocks here, so this will be really good. I'll really have some action. Mm, that looks nice, doesn't it? And then make, maybe we can do just a little bit. Yeah, right in here. Okay, I'm just gonna continue working on this, kind of repetitive, and we'll get back and do something else. Maybe highlights, or maybe more shadows. All right, I've decided to do some brown in the water as well right now. This is gonna represent little rocks and stuff that we can see under the water. Now, I think we should concentrate some highlight, you know, make it seem like the sun is kind of coming across like this and really illuminating this area and then that area of the forest, kind of the lower section. That way we get dark and dark and it just, it'll just look better that way. It'll, it'll, I think, work really well as a painting if we do it that way, which should be cool. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm just making these rocks with the corner of my brush, feathering them in softly. As we go back to about here, we'll just sort of drag the brush to put a little color in there and call it good. Yeah, that works to me. I think that'll be fine. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. <laughs> All right, down here. Maybe just do a little more. We don't need a ton. And maybe they get darker as we come down here. Just a little brown. Good. Just helps to establish the feel of, you know, this isn't super deep. Now the next step would be placing on some mid-tones and I'm going to do this kind of more to the light side. I would call that maybe the mid-tone that we first did, maybe mid-tone on the dark side. So this one's kind of toward the light side of things. Yeah, it works out pretty well, doesn't it? I like that. There, so you just drop it in. I'm kind of using the corner of my brush. I like the way that that looks. You can go straight in. I don't know, this gives me a, a broader stroke, I feel like. And I like the way that that kind of that kind of reads against the darker stuff anyways, having that broader light. Mm. The more you touch it, the softer it gets. This is obviously not anywhere near completed. But we kind of finally start to see a little water shape happening. A little bit like ocean, actually a lot like ocean waves. It really is a lot like foam in the water. It feels just like it when I'm painting it. You know, the brush on the canvas. <laughs> if I was closing my eyes, I'd tell you I'd be painting foam. Now it's time to finally start turning this into a very pretty <laughs> river. So I was a little concerned about it, so I wiped it with actually with a brush. I kind of mushed it in, took off some of the paint. You can do it with a paper towel too. I just didn't want the shavings since it was such a big area. Anyway, that blended it a little more than I wanted, but I really don't care because the more important thing is that we don't have too much wet paint up here to work with. So now I slapped on a little white. Now let me actually show you how to do that. So there's some white right here. You just kind of figure out where you want this light and you just slap it on. This is your, this is gonna be your palette for a little while. Good, and then I'll wipe off my brush to, just to where it's reasonably clean like that. And then I take just the edge of this brush and I move it kind of like I would again, an ocean wave. And I like the idea of those ocean waves because they're, <laughs> They're easier, in my mind, to think about. And that creates a, a bright spot. You can have some hard edges, but we'll do mostly soft edges. I'm using a, a finer tooth canvas today, actually, which helps as well get some of the softness. There. I'm gonna be very delicate here. This is gonna take slightly longer because I am being so careful not to get anything too crazy. So you just slowly build this out. Wipe your brush every couple minutes. There. All right, step back every once in a while. Make sure your lighting is developing very nicely. Ours is. And then keep going. And remember to have fun. <laughs> nice. Over here. There, now I'm finishing up with rolling strokes. So after I did the entire area, I went back and just blended using these rolling strokes. And the, this is the secret to making this water look connected and not like an ocean, is use circles. I don't wanna do it a whole lot more because I'm pretty much done. Maybe I can show you down here. Just use these little circles. And if you wanna move down, walk it down with the circles. Does it make sense? So that you get, and it's okay to you know, come back on yourself like that. That's okay. 
Mm, see how that works? We still have just the tiniest bit of movement. I like that. We're close, but not quite done with the water area. Of course, it'll really come to life with the highlight, the final highlight that is with the detail round brush. But this is looking pretty good, isn't it? See how you work those around? Yeah, that looks good. Let me stand back. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mm, okay, enough of that. I set down that brush and let me grab a, a little brush here and, and the detail round. <laughs> the little brush. And paint in a rock or two right there. This is kind of going to indicate where our wonderful rapids sort of start. Mm, I like that. And we won't have a ton of them, but maybe just enough to kind of give us the feeling of the rapids. Maybe they, let's walk them back to, and I think this would look really good back to the land here just a few yes mm. we can cover up some of these and make them look like they're underwater but a lot of them i'd like to have showing mm. that's so pretty okay and maybe right down here we can't just stop we can't just leave it at one you can't stop right there I've gotta do another couple of big ones right here i won't go overboard though now let's go ahead and just add in a little detail here. A little more than we had. We're not going to go too much further than what we have here because I kind of like it. But I'm going to concentrate some of the light in the middle and refine a lot of my edges that are kind of weird or that need to be sharpened up a little bit. Now, obviously water shouldn't be too sharp, but we certainly do want to have some definition in the water. So I'm going to work very slowly on this. And maybe you just stand back every once in a while and see, I, I see the spot I, I was already started. Kind of got it going because it's a slow process. So see, I see that spot there that needs a little bit more of dark. So you can just touch it and it'll blend right in. I've got a little blue on here because there's some brown tones in there. And, and you don't necessarily want to be mixing your white into those brown tones too much. You can help eliminate some of those brown tones mixing into your white by using the blue. There we go. That looks good. Reload a lot, because the more you reload, the cleaner your paint will be. Yeah, that looks good. Mm. Starting, to, starting to look like a little river back here. I like that. Nice. Don't overdo it. I'm concentrating most of the detail here in the middle. That's where it needs to be in order to make it look, well, to make it look interesting, right? Plus, that's just the way it is in the picture. Remember, I'm working from a photo on this particular one. Now that we're kind of done, hopefully, with that water area, let's go ahead and move on to rocks. Finally, something that is a little more normal. <laughs> I actually had a lot of fun with that river. I did it first because I wanted to make sure that I devoted enough time to it. I didn't want to be, like, tired at the end of the day trying to do it. So now we can be tired at the end of the day trying to do the trees, which is a lot better ask me. There we go. I've got these warm colors going and you gotta have fun when you paint, right? I have these warm colors going and maybe I'll throw in a cool color every once in a while. It'll help tie this whole painting together because we have warm and cool colors in the water as well. Very pretty. And we're gonna put warm um, like weeds and stuff here in the foreground. I absolutely love this. This is a, a fun subject. So if you guys are stuck in a rut and you want to try something, well, even if you're not, and you just want to try something new, then give something like this a try. It's really cool. Yeah. All right, just mixing up more color each and every time I reload just to get a different effect. Throw some reds in or whatever. This is pretty much all foreground anyways, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Now using the corner of the fan brush, kind of a, an interesting way to do it. But I just want to use the, actually I'll tell you what, let me use the other corner. Using the other corner of the fan brush, <laughs> We're going to drop in a little bit of highlight. And you see, I use this because I want these long spindly things. So it looks like a, it's a bush that kind of throws the leaves outward. I have no idea what it is. Doesn't matter. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Right up in here, just do the same. And you'll note, notice that by tapping, you get this little bit of an open stroke. You can come back in and, and hit it with the detail round if you feel like it's too repetitive. But because I'm tapping so slowly, and I'm going so light with the pressure, I don't leave much of a trace, you know. 
if you leave a big trace of what you were doing with a fan brush, that's not good, but I don't think we're gonna have that issue right now. There. Yeah, that looks good. You know what I mean by tracing it is like, um, by leaving a trace, you don't want people to see that you use the fan, ooh, you just use the fan brush on that. No, no, you don't want people doing that because they'll do that to you, just trust me. <laughs> yeah, so we don't want to deal with that. So we just don't leave any traces of how we painted. It just looks good. And people don't necessarily know how we got where we got. All right, just finishing up, tapping on some loose leaves. Very, very dark, you see that? You don't want much. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a three quarter brush and as you can see, I don't even know if I mentioned it, I dropped in a few trees to go in like that. It took two seconds, so you guys know how to do that. Now, I think I wanna take, just pick out a couple of these and, and bring them to the foreground. We can do that just by touching. See that nice light, man, maybe a little lighter color. Yes, there we go. We need something strong to hold up against the beautiful river. So we'll go a little lighter. Oh yes, look at that. Oh, that's so pretty. Here's one. Nice, I love it. Now, here, check this out. We need a, a one that's fallen over. I was gonna say a dead one. I have no idea if it's actually dead or not. But there it is. Maybe just have that go up. Adds a little extra interest to the painting. I really like the way that looks. It's a good spot. Stuff like that you don't have to do when you're painting from a photo, but because it looks good and for the art actually turns out, you know, to be a positive thing, it's, you know, then a good idea to go ahead and just go with it. If it didn't make sense for the painting, then leave it out. So that our eye doesn't run off the canvas, I will drop a couple of limbs down like this. Very, very important to do that. Good. that'll help our eye not run off. See how it kind of flares out and stops, very important. Okay, back to the rest of these trees. <laughs> I'm having fun. Now as surprising as this is, I think I'm gonna continue on with my fan brush for stippling some leaves on the trees. Certainly not in a, a, a technique that I usually use for painting leaves on trees like this, but it works in certain situations and I think this is one of them. I'm gonna make sure that I haven't opened, oh, actually in acrylics, I guess I do this more often, but not so much with oil. There. And of course today I'm painting in oils, so even though the canvas is kind of tiny. So this is kind of, it really does work for the size painting, I think. It's the right texture. If you go a lot bigger, then this, maybe the effect would look too small. I think it works though for this, so <laughs> we're gonna take full advantage of that. There. Now oh, obviously you don't use this exclusively. You come back and you add extra details with the detail round brush. All right, that's looking, looking good. Just keep working on this, not too much. I don't wanna clog up the background with too many leaves. Now one of the last things I wanna do up here is connect in some of these leaves with limbs. See that? And actually I'm gonna paint some trees in using the liner brush as well. I think it'll add a nice extra a sharp detail that will really just look nice in the background. Yeah, see how that fills in some? You can see I did a little work with my detail round so we have more than one brush stroke going, very important. If you don't do that, it will look like you just stamped them in. Yeah, there we go. But make this look kind of like a forest. Some of these are out in the light and some of them are more in the dark. You can change back and forth between colors in this liner brush pretty easily. Sometimes you can get away without washing it at all. Just go right into the next color, like I did here for the dark. <laughs> there, cool. Let's keep this going. You don't wanna ruin this beautiful look that we have to the forest. That is kind of the softness in the background, but I do think that it would just benefit from a few of these limbs, especially on the trees that are a little closer. Now, one of the last things that we are gonna do up here is drop in a ton of little weeds and action like this. And we need these to be fairly tall, so don't be skimpy with them. Now I'm telling that to myself as much as I am to you guys, because I also have a tendency to, you know, overdo it. But no, we need these to be tall. I'd say you probably can't overdo it unless you go really high up there. 
You see, this helps to frame in the painting. This is just the dark ones. That's all I'm doing right now. We'll come back and we can do other ones as well. But this shows that we're on some land. Actually, what I, what I should do and will do <laughs> is take a, a fan brush. We've been using a fan brush a lot today. And just brush up to start me on some on some of this action. Dark, very, very dark. And I'll, I'll stop doing that right about there, but at least it gets some paint down, wipe the brush out, and you know, at least we get a nice head start on, on having that fairly solid, and we can work our lights over top of that. Good. Actually, I'm gonna bring that over to past halfway. That looks good. Okay, back to my liner brush, if I can find it. <laughs> and then bring these over the top of that. And then you just do a bunch of these. We can do rocks here, it doesn't matter. It just shows a little land that we're standing on. And it kind of gives you some scale and some perspective here in this painting. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.